Welcome back to Biotrack Selling. We are Pierre, Lisa, and our furry friend Tiller, selling around the world in our Outremere 5X catamaran. We spent a fabulous month in Cape Town, and when it was time to leave, we left in the early morning with the 515 opening bridge. We were the first of the rally boats to leave that morning. We were up early, and the view was just gorgeous as we left. There's just a gorgeous view of Table Mountain as you sail out of Cape Town. Uh, we just kept looking back for that beautiful view, and as the sunrise kept getting brighter and the view was getting better. The winds were very light or non-existent as we left Cape Town, but then they picked up during the morning until we had a very brisk breeze of about 20 knots. Yeah, Sailing along the Nanipian coast offers a mesmerizing view of the towering sand dunes that seamlessly merge into the Atlantic Ocean. We sailed along the coast towards Walvis Bay in Namibia, which was going to be our destination. That was the destination for the rally. And then we decided to change our destination. Here's why. We're detouring to Luderitz. It's uh, supposed to be an interesting town. We've been thinking about going that anyways, but uh, we heard from two canoes this morning and they have a problem where their head sails been wrapped around the fourth day. So we said we'd duck in there so when they arrive we can help them uh, fix that problem. I've called up the port control on the VHF. Even though it's Saturday, they will be able to check us in. And so we're going to arrive in about half an hour. We had to turn and go up, upwind, uh, backtrack just a little bit to go there because we had decided maybe not to go there and then we heard from two canoes and turned around. Um, so that's what's going on here today. Luderitz is known to be a windy city, but when we went into port, it was blowing 35 and 40 knots. We tried to set an anchor and we just dragged. And then, then Andy, who's a local, who takes it on by himself to help uh, visiting boats to find a mooring, found us a commercial mooring that would hold the boat very securely. We're on a mooring and it's blowing 35 to 40 knots. And my microphone just fell off. Yeah, thank goodness we're on a mooring because it's blowing 35, 40 knots. It's really blowing. It's supposed to be a 100 ton mooring, so we should be good. <clears throat> Two canoes came into port with the head cell flapping and been twisted around the fore state. And poor two canoes, they completely lost the cell. and said it was in good shape and could have been rescued, but as soon as they turned up wind to come into port with the 40 knots of wind, they got shredded into tatters. With all the windage of the boat and the wind howling, it was clear that they would have trouble anchoring. So Pierre came up with a brilliant solution. So the solution was to tie the boats stern to stern for the night, which would be a great solution as long as the winds didn't turn. Antoine from Two Canoes went up the mast to remove the worst of the flapping mess while we got all the alarms set so we could monitor wind direction and all the usual anchor alarm stuff. With the sun setting fast, we got it all done before it got dark. Two Canoes came on board and then Pum 3 arrived in Luderitz just after dark and we had everyone on board at Biotrek for a nice dinner. Oh, 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 oh. Hey. 
，我是猫猫。马屁。<laughs> the salad, c'est grâce à Jean-Marie. Il a fait les, les salades. Ça va? J'espère qu'elle est bonne. We're just um, trying to make some action for you. <laughs> <laughs> La boîte, qu'est-ce qu'on jette comme ça essentiellement ouais, Elle revient cool. et elle remonte un peu et là le, le, le vent revient du bon côté. Ouais. Là, la boîte a deux choix. Ou elle revient comme ça, ouais. c'est bien. Ouais. Ou elle revient ouais. comme ça. A bit later in Walvis Bank, Richard was explaining how such a mess could happen. And that's the cell starts to wind around one way, the wind switch, and the bottom of the cell goes around the other way, and then it just gets all twisted up. Well, it looks like they're almost done over there. Two canoes waited a day for the winds to calm a bit before getting the rest of the sail cut away, and they managed to do it without any of it falling in the water. Meanwhile, we also had to go up the mast on Biotrack because the topping lift had become detached from its anchor point on the mainsail and had to be recovered. We took advantage of our stop in Luderitz to visit the town, which looks like a town out of an old Western movie. And we also visited the Yacht Club, which was very friendly and had a really nice bar and restaurant. Some of the kids were intrigued by the fluffy dog, and Tiller's always a hit wherever we go. Hey, Tiller. There we go. <laughs> She's a good dog. Oh. <laughs> Namibia was once known as Southwest Africa and it has a history marked by colonial rule and a struggle for independence. It first became a German colony in the late 19th century, a period that lasted until the end of World War I. German architecture marks the period of German rule and afterwards it became a South African territory. In 1990, after years of resistance and international pressure, Namibia finally achieved its independence, marking a significant moment in its history. Besides sampling some of the local restaurants where we left our mark, we also had a chance to visit Kolmanskop, which is an abandoned mining town. It's now a ghost town about 10 kilometers outside of Luderitz. Diamonds were discovered in the region by a railway worker who had previously worked in South African diamond mines and recognized a rough diamond lying on the ground. A town was built there driven by the enormous wealth of the diamond mines and the residents built a village in the architectural style of a German town with all the amenities and institutions, including a hospital, ballroom, power station, school, bowling alley, theater, sports hall, casino, ice factory, as well as the first tram in Africa. It's a very windy day here, which is why we're covered up because the sand is blowing in our eyes and our mouths. We were able to wander around the town and in and out the houses that were full of sand. The town was abandoned in the 1930s after the area was depleted of diamonds and also one of the richest diamond fields ever found had been found to the south of the area and so that really sealed the fate of the town to be abandoned and lost to the desert. It 
was amazing to see a few plants could survive in all that sand. Speaking of diamonds, a diamond mining ship came into port where we were in Ludwitz and it was a sight to see. Was there a fish here? Oh no, a toy. Time to leave and go on to Baldus Bay. Two canoes had left earlier in the day and Pump 3 and Biotrek left about the same time. We put up our Jenniker, so Pump 3 put up the Spinnaker. Oh, I guess that means Paris probably going to want to take a reef out of the main. We'll see. <laughs> We did get into port before Pomp 3 and got the last mooring, so they had to anchor. The Walvis Bay Yacht Club is just a beehive of activity on the weekends, with lots of kids playing on the sand and swimming. The Yacht Club has a very active conservation arm and they go out to rescue seals, they get tangled in ropes. So baby seals like to play with things they find in the water and the problem is, is then they grow and these ropes are tangled around their neck and it gets tighter and tighter. And last year, this organization rescued over 850 seals. The seals are very resilient. Once the rope is removed, they heal very well. And it was a really interesting talk. see ourselves as, uh, as custodians for the ocean here because uh, well, we are all people growing up in the sea, we're all very passionate about the ocean as yourselves, otherwise you would not be here now, I guess.
Well, this bay is an area rich in wildlife, and we went on a tour of the sand dunes in an area called the Sandwich Tour. So that's an area of a strip of land that's sandwiched between the ocean and a salty bay. <laughs> but, oh, look at the ocean right there. And oh. they, they say that that area we just went through, that in high tide in the spring with a full moon, is completely it's completely flooded. flooded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Driving so that's why the there's salt on the boat on the road. It was a salt road, but now we're back in the sand road, bump, bumping <laughs> that's around. <a> bumpy. <laughs> Nanimbian Desert has a really stark beauty and it's one of the oldest deserts in the world as it meets the vast expanse of the sea. And look at this close-up of the sand, just a display of colors and a surprising abundance of wildlife in the desert. On this short trip we saw hyenas and a springbok. Too soon, it would be time to leave again. A beautiful sunset on our last night. Well, the sun has set. I'm just saying the sky is gorgeous. Walvis Bay at night. Through the loading containers even at night. There's a seal right at the back of the boat. We wanted to come up, but we've got the fenders there to keep it from coming up. contribute to a not-for-profit foundation, the Alliance to Cure, which is trying to help patients that have cerebral cavernous malformation. To find out more about it, please visit our website. And if you'd like to contribute also, you can find the link on our website or below.